Hey Word Nerds, Erin Latimer here. Today I want to talk to you about an epidemic that is sweeping the nation. That's right, I'm talking about purple prose. Okay, fine, maybe epidemic is a bit too much, but it's bad. If anyone's not sure what purple prose is, it basically means you're using a bunch of really fancy words when you should be using a simple word. Or you're describing something in three paragraphs that really only needs one sentence. The fact is, you shouldn't have to pull out your dictionary while you're writing, at least not multiple times. Unless you're aware of the fact that you're using the same word too much, you shouldn't be continually looking up words because you want to put cool words in your manuscript. Purple prose is a common mistake of beginning writers, and it can end up sounding really flowery and ridiculous, or like you're reading it out of a textbook. When you first start out writing, don't attempt to write beautifully, just attempt to write a story. Now repeat. Eventually, once you get good enough, the beautiful writing will come. Remember that old saying, kiss, keep it simple, stupid? And I'm not that you're stupid or anything. That's not what I was meaning to say. Hmm, never really liked that saying. The thing to do when you're beginning is to write the best story you possibly can without worrying about what sort of words you tell it with, at least initially. Through second and third drafts you can go through and you can edit it and you can polish it and you can make it shiny. Normally you're taking out words rather than putting them in. The fact is, your story is the main part of why your readers read. Your reader shouldn't have to machete their way through a jungle of purple prose to get to it. In case you were worried that I'm not going to read out an example of purple prose, I am. Let's face it, I can't resist. So the purple prose I'm reading to you today is a passage from Twilight, of all things. Which is funny because normally when I think of Twilight I think of the writing as pretty simple and the story as what's the really engaging part, but when it comes to passages about Edward, I notice that there's a lot of purple prose going on. So this is when he's in the meadow and he's just doing his sparkly thing. Edward in the sunlight was shocking. I couldn't get used to it, though I'd been staring at him all afternoon. His skin, white despite the faint flush from yesterday's hunting trip, literally sparkled, like thousands of tiny diamonds were embedded into the surface. He lay perfectly still in the grass, his shirt open over his sculpted, incandescent chest, his skin scintillating, scintillating arms bare. I don't even know how to pronounce that. His glistening, pale, lavender lids were shut, though of course he didn't sleep. A perfect statue carved in some unknown stone, smooth like marble, glittering like crystal. Now, I, I'm not really on board with the whole hate on Stephanie Myers thing, so that's not what I'm here to do at all. I actually have read all of the Twilight books and I didn't find that there were many passages like this one, it was just this one that stood out. Because there's a lot of scintillating violet eyelids and weird things. So moving on, three signs that you might have purple prose. One, too many adjectives and adverbs. These tend to clutter up your writing and it's not something that I would worry about the first time you're writing your rough draft. But it's the type of thing that you can go back and cut out about half of them. Two, it's taking a paragraph to say what can be said in a sentence, as in, Edward sparkled. Three, you spend pages describing the setting. And I'm actually going to go so far as to say, not just pages, but paragraphs. If you've got more than one paragraph, or like more than one sentence, to be honest, about how the sun is rising over the hills, unless it's like mind-bogglingly beautiful writing, I'm going to be bored. Actually, you know what? Even if it's mind-bogglingly beautiful, after about two sentences about the sun rising, <sighs> what were we talking about? I just want to move on with the story. So what about you guys? Have you found yourself the victim of purple prose before? Have you gone back into your manuscript and found large chunks of it, which is later on embarrassing? Totally not talking from personal experience. Also, how do you plan to avoid purple prose in the future? Let me know in the comments below. Don't forget, on Sunday at 7.30 Eastern Standard Time, the Word Nerds are having our live chat, and we would love to see you there. Thanks for watching, fellow Word Nerds, and I'll see you next week.